come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. The longer it is, the better it is, Colin. You That's where right? I'm trying yeah. to go. Like how how yeah. far can it go? Uh, we're not really a movie review podcast that happens every Saturday. You can find us wherever you find the greatest podcasts that have ever been made. Is that exactly what we are? Interesting. <laughs> the one of the greatest podcasts that have ever. Been? Oh, okay, sure. Well, well no, I mean, do we? Well, we kind of, we, we talk about. But we're a movie talk uh, talk podcast. Yeah, mo- <laughs> movie talk pod. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so hey, do us a favor. Wherever you found us, please go and give us a like or a star rating or a review. Hey, we'll read those later when we bring out our mail man igor all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you we want to spread the word and become the fastest growing horror no 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 no. we are yeah prove us we are we are the (laughs) fastest growing movie podcast in the world until until proven otherwise until proven otherwise (laughs) so that's up to you yeah the burden's on you Uh, to prove us wrong yeah (laughs) listener and or brailer and or random person who's listening to this podcast prove us wrong exactly I know, I know. Try it. Go ahead. I need documents faxed to me. I'd uh, like to have an enemy to take down, so, so sure, show us their pile gas is growing faster. <laughs> I need something to go against. <laughs> Bring it on. We're in. We're ready for the fight. Yes. That's right. Uh, so we should probably introduce ourselves. These are the starting lineup of the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. Colin. Just kidding, it was Colin. <laughs> Are you yelling at me? I was looking at you. I was trying to remember what cues I need to cover with Colin not being... Right, you got nothing. <laughs> That's you, right. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll have so... to find out if she missed a good one tonight or a bad one. I don't know, Colin. Colin, what we watched tonight? Tonight we watched a movie from 1987, and it's called... Well, it's familiar... Well, yeah, what is it called? It is known now as Blood Rage, mm-hmm. but you may have seen it under the title Nightmare at Shadow Woods, or Ooh. you may know it under the title... Of Slasher. <laughs> Stalker. Was it no, Slasher? Slasher? Was it Slasher? Yeah, but it was Stalker. filmed under the title of Complex. Jesus. Okay. All, right, all of too them many, except too that many. one were good. <laughs> Complex is bad, but all the other ones are good titles. I, I mean, I like Complex because there it is. It takes place in a, a apartment com- or, uh, uh, And they have a Complex. Complex is a better title than I think you're giving it credit <laughs> yeah, for. Yeah, but like, it's not It's not a good horror movie title. You know what I'm saying? Complex. Like, no, especially terror. not for an 80s slasher. I mean, probably not. That's not going to draw people. Let's go no. see Complex. That's not going to draw people in. Blood Rage is going to draw Blood people Rage. in. Yeah. Well, how did it get all these titles? It was filmed in yeah, a Complex. It was the distributor changed the title to Slasher. It actually came out theatrically. So it was shot in 1983. It was released briefly theatrically in 1987. Jesus. Oh, wow. As Nightmare at Shadow Woods. Which I also the, like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a good title, too. I think the title of the tagline is something like, Not All Nightmares Happen on Elm Street. <laughs> right. oh, okay. I could you're be wrong, just, but it's playing something off like that. Stuff. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. fine. And then it was finally released on video as Blood Rage. Blood Rage. So there you go. Now, apparently, the theatrical version of this movie, Nightmare at Shadow Woods, deleted all the gore from it. So this oh, is a, a no. My oh, Bloody no. Valentine situation here. No. <laughs> and we watched the full version, this right? This is full on. Yes. Okay. It felt yeah. like it. Because it felt, when yeah. it's got to be. When it came out on video, they reinstated all of the gore that had been deleted from the theatrical gotcha. version. So that's the version that Arrow Video has, uh, has restored. Good. They actually put this out on a three-disc uh, Blu-ray set uh, that has three versions of the movie. The theatrical the home video and like this hybrid cut of the, Ooh. cause the home video version, actually that's not what we watched. I think we watched like a, I think maybe we watched the hybrid where it's all the stuff from the theatrical minus like the extraneous scenes from the home video. They had to pad out the running. This cut. is what I love. Yeah. I love, version. I love movies like this and just like, Hey, there's three versions of this. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that is, that is my shit. I want to get into it. I want to see this <laughs> all version. And then I want to see like, what, what the fuck did they cut out? Or I want to see the cut down version. Like what, what else is added yeah. into this? Yeah. If you want to hear more of that talk, see our Halloween to the TV cut yes, episode. Exactly. That's yeah. Sean. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I, this is my, that. this is Sean's, my kink. I guess yeah. we're going to say this is my fetish. Um, just like I, I, 
I would love to see. You said there's a three disc. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. This is Sean. Oh, He's Sean's about gonna to order that right I, now. Yeah, I, know. I might <laughs> hunt this down while we're recording. I'm. I'm He's on, on my, Amazon. I'm on my phone <laughs> currently, so um, uh, we. I may find this. So you said we watched a hybrid version. I you think, think right. I okay. Think. It and, says here that we watch the. 2K restoration of the hard home video yes. version. Okay. Yes. So, and this is like 82 minutes. Yes. 82. So, how short was Ooh. the right? I, well, because I, yeah. I did it. One. Yeah, the like actual theatrical. I, yeah, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I mean, I I've seen the poster it's all Oscar for it. moments. It's got to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it was a drive-in, you know, classic. Of course. Classic. I, I would know, love to see saw. this drive-in. Oh, my God. I would. Yeah, this I would, would love to see it drive-in. <laughs> well, this is, I mean, the thing about this that kind of, that's interesting is like, so it was filmed like at the tail end of the 80s slasher boom. Right? 83, you said? Yeah. It was filmed in 83. Yeah, so this is when yeah. the slashers are kind of winding down. Yep. But. Because I think of the wind down, that's why the, the got shelved basically until 1987. Sure, you know, so it, it was a movie out of time when it actually came out. Yeah. Nobody saw it. <laughs> no, I can't imagine anybody would. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I hadn't even seen it or heard of it. Although I've seen the actual, uh, I think the video box for this is somewhere in here. Yeah, it's that. Is the... does that look familiar to you? You know what? That it's one like a... doesn't. This is one of the ones where the uh, box no, art it does doesn't. not seem familiar to me. No. Okay. Like, I've never heard of this movie. Okay. Well, I hadn't either until it was on the Joe Bob Briggs show last Thanksgiving Ooh. for his Dinners of Death. And after it was the fourth movie, and I'm like, what? And that's what I love about the Joe Bob Briggs show. Yep. You, you see stuff on there that even if you're a hardcore horror fan, you've never heard of before. This, that's the thing. There's <laughs> always something to discover. Yeah. Always. So this is never run out. It's a it's a Thanksgiving set slasher movie. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> we, we know that because the same joke is used five times. It's a not, joke. It's not cranberry sauce. Uh, I mean, they want it to be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying for it to be a joke. Is it now? Did you laugh? I thought it was hilarious just because they keep saying it so many All times. All right, it's it is it's the uh, it's, it's like a it's, tick it's, at it's some the, point. Well, it's the repetition. It's it's like the uh, the rule of threes, but we've gone past threes into sixes, yeah, at yeah, this yeah, point. and it comes back around. Yeah, it like always it's kinda, when a joke the comedy goes comes back for around. so long, funny, it stops not being funny, funny, and then it comes really back funny. funny. Yeah, and, and we go from that's there. what happens. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the delivery is fantastic. <laughs> that's not that. That's not cranberry sauce. Uh, that's not cranberry, but it's the same. That's every not time. cranberry sauce. Yeah, right. It's just like, all right, give us a couple of those. Like, that's not cranberry sauce. That's not cranberry sauce. <laughs> like, what word are you going to emphasize <laughs> yeah. in that sentence the next time you deliver it? Do you think there are so many repeated lines in this movie because the it was the actors just did multiple takes and they just left them all in? That's what it feels I, I, like. There was a couple of those. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, the hard cut. Is just like we'll put all takes in. Well, we see. I mean, this is okay. So we're going to say that this is a, a categorically bad movie, right? Where as far as like it's badly an amateur. Movie. Oh Let's yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's shades of Samurai Cop here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I, like not that bad, but like it's teetering on the edge of Samurai Cop. Yeah, it's definitely on the same plane as like The Room, as far as quality and like technical there's aptitude. There's more vacuuming than there should be <laughs> yeah. in a horror movie. But there's people walking through the background of shots yeah. or something like yep. that. I mean, the, yeah, yeah. You don't see any boom mics, but uh, you know, no, but it's pretty goddamn close. It. Weird moments, probably right. going for a little too long most of the time. Yeah, literally people walking out of frame before the scene ends. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, so this movie is about. Well, I don't even know. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, a movie that takes place on Thanksgiving. That's right. So you can yeah. gather around and you're you feeling go. a very familial, you know, vibe, and at this time of year, you know, uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. At an apartment complex. The whole thing takes place in an apartment complex, except for the opening scene, <laughs> which sets the mood for the movie, oh, which take pl takes place at probably the greatest thing, a place that a, a horror movie can take place at. The drive-in. The drive-in theater. Absolutely. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's the movie that's playing? Oh, we were just talking about it. We what were, because it, it was in the Is in it the, the house that... The, uh, the house that... Cried, cried murder. Cried, cried murder, murder, yes. Because yeah. we're in like a double feature with the dorm and the drip blood. Yeah, it's just yeah. down the street. Right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The exactly. house that cried the house murder. The house that cried murder. Which apparently is actually a real movie. Uh, it's in the credits, so yeah. apparently. So, I know, right? That's another because yeah. that's what was coming soon to the Saturday the time, Night Free Show. We're just show. like, we need to film this, <laughs> and that's it. That's all we got. Yeah. Because it doesn't show up on a screen anywhere, does it? Yeah, it's playing in the background at the at the drive-in. 
There's an early, uh, the opening scene also uh, introduces us to, I think it's uh, Ted Raimi's yes. first movie role. Is it his first? His first movie this role. First. I think he was like 19 years old when he made this movie. Jesus. And he he's is... never looked different. No, he's always looked exactly <laughs> Always Ted Raimi. <laughs> yeah. What's he doing in this movie? He's uh, a condom salesman. <laughs> that's right. He's the guy who greets you in the ba- usually, you know, in the bathroom. You'll, you'll, you know, in an upper uh, high end place. Sure. You get the guy who's got the soaps. Uh, towel, sir. Soaps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, leave a tip. An attendant. I hate. If when I, I hate when those are in the bathroom. I, 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 I do as it. well. It's it's, <laughs> it's it's unnecessary. It's awkward. It's awkward, and I have to I pay to use the bathroom now. Like, right. come on. Like, come on. I just want to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Well, it, you feel obligated to tip them, so you're yeah. paying to use the bathroom at that point. Yeah. No. no, and that's Fuck take not. note. People don't know. No, no, no bathroom, bathroom attendants. No, unless they're selling condoms. Usually there's a machine for that. Yeah. Right. Is it or more personal when it's uh, Ted? Ramey? I don't want to look anyone in the eye when I'm buying condoms <laughs> <laughs> at all, let alone a dude who's going to open a vest and be like, hey, what size are you? Well, and they're like, because that's basically what he's asking. They're not in boxes. They're just like the No, they're wrappers, loose condoms. Like loose. And I'm yeah. like, what well, did you do oh, to these in condoms? They're the wrappers. Okay. Are you just the, poking yeah. holes and shit and selling uh, yeah, them? Yeah, yeah they're in the wrappers, no. but they're I like individual Ted wrappers. No, all I don't trust out. anybody who just like, you're just in the bathroom selling condoms. What well, do you got? Everyone in this drive in theater needs these condoms because everyone everywhere is fucking in the back seat. Yeah, not even bring your they're, own. They're all having kids. Yeah. yeah. Except, well, even uh, Louise Lasser. Louise Lasser, right? Yes. Who's in this movie? Who's the star? She's the big get, right? Now, why is she the big get? Well, she was on you. a TV show and was it the 60s or the 70s. She, it was called uh, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. It was like a soap okay. opera, but it was like a serious yes. thing or like, a, I, I don't know. I've watched I remember this. pieces of it. Right. She basically had nervous breakdowns all the time. No, oh, you don't so, say. So she <laughs> has, she's one note is what you're saying. Yeah. She's also Woody Allen's second wife. Really? She was Woody Allen's second wife? Yeah. Oh. Wow. I don't know okay. who the first Woody, Mrs. Woody Allen was and the third was I feel sorry Soon for me. all of them. Soon Yi? Mia Soon Farrow me? was in there somewhere, wasn't she? No, they were uh, never married. No. Soon Yi. Soon Yi. Yeah, yeah, Soon yeah. Yi, yeah. Um, oh boy, that just sounds like a, a bunch of her life is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Louise Lasser? Yeah. It comes out in her performance, though. She at least could use that as food, fuel for her, uh, her art. I mean, she has, she is using <laughs> everything that she has experienced up to that point in her performance. She is in, in a different movie, movie different as you guys movie. were pointing out in this. I mean, like her performance in this, well, she plays this mother. She's a, a mother of these twins. Yes. Right. Uh, they Todd all go and the, Terry. Right. That's important to know. Todd yes. and Terry. Todd and Terry. And they go to the drive-in, and she's with her new bow. If you have twins, you can't name them Todd and Mark. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's got to yeah, yeah, be two T's. Like, alliteration is key with twins. Yeah. Larry and Louise. Mm. Okay. Um, so Todd and Terry... They're like, you know, when moms start, well, they're sleeping in the backseat of the, the station wagon. Oh boy, because a uh, single mom's got to take every opportunity she can. I mean, come on. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, Driving. You know, well, yeah, well I mean, she wonders wits. why her kids are fucked up. This is the, the choices you make, woman. It well, influences she's your very, children. Uh, she's a very delusional woman. Yeah. Well, I, I like the say. way, too, that like when she starts making out with the guy that she's brought with the gigolo her. Gigolo that she's brought In the with front her. seat of the car while her kids are sleeping in the back of the station. Yeah. Wagon. And they wake up and they're like, oh, no, mom's at it again. And so again. again. <laughs> Again, so they yeah. know the routine. Mom's trying to find love. Those kids are very judgmental. Yeah, and they bail out, and uh, one of them, which is Terry, finds uh, a hatchet in somebody's car. Because I mean, yeah. this is what you do, right? You bring your hatchets to the drive, and you sure. just leave them. Well, you just have shit in your car, and uh, he he finds a couple that are screwing in the back seat of their car. Yeah, and delivers a hatchet to the face. Of, of, for the of the dude. No reason. For, for no reason. Just because he's for a psycho. Being a psycho. Yep. Just fucking beating a dude to death. Yeah. And this kid is like, how old are we saying? 12? Yeah. 12 years old. 12. Probably. It's got to be 12. Okay. And then he proceeds to blame the crime on his twin brother, Todd. Yes. Who's gone catatonic because he just witnessed his brother murder someone. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I like, totally at the drop this. of a hat, just be like, I'm going to murder this guy out of nowhere. Yeah. 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 
I mean, really? I was not expecting it. No. <laughs> just like, oh, he's got a hatchet. What's he gonna, he's going to murder the dude who's making out with his mom? Understa- yeah. Understandable. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I guess. Because that's what sets Terry off, right? Is that his mom is making out with yes, some guy. It is, because he's so, very connected with his mother. Oh, oh, he's connected mm-hmm. with his mother. They yes. share a relation, an interesting relationship. So this then is the inciting incident of the slasher movie. This yes, is the event correct. in the past, because now we're going to jump all of a sudden 10 years into the future, right? Mm-hmm. right? So this is kind of, this is that right. moment where the catatonia has been introduced. Now, 10 years later, they're all grown up. Right. And Todd has been blamed for this murder. Yeah. And he has been... Uh, Institutionalized. Like, yeah, in his school, quote unquote. That well, is, because mom's not like uh, ready to admit that no, he's actually in an institution. Right. It's like, oh, he's at school. No, he's in an institution because he murdered someone, according to everything. But the therapist has got it in her head that maybe because now that Todd's memory of the night is coming back and he's actually coming out of his shell, that maybe he didn't do it. Maybe Terry is responsible. Right. Right. There's an awesome scene where mom comes to see her son for the first time in 10 years. Apparently, I don't know what was going on there. Is it the first time in 10 years? That's what the psychiatrist said in her voiceover? Right. There's this voiceover that happens, which feels like we don't have enough information in this scene. We need to add a voiceover to it. Yeah. But she says, I haven't seen them together. She does. You're right. Mm -hmm. You know, because now he's coming out of the psychosis. So now she's going to introduce them together. But then mom says, every year. I bring him his pie. pumpkin pie uh, wrapped in a little box uh, on Thanksgiving. You don't have the teeth to deliver that monologue. <laughs> yeah, she's got those chompers, she's man. She's got yeah. chompers. As, as uh, Michaela called her during this movie, she's the, the female Willem Dafoe. <laughs> yes, imagine like, Willem teeth Dafoe. Teeth-wise, this is correct. Yeah. And like she's got that same jaw shape, you know? Right. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, she smiles and it's just like... Uh, it's a Joker smile uh, every time ooh. she smiles. Yeah, and they put her, her wardrobe in this movie is kind of off the fucking hook i mean because if, if you could describe a movie as flesh colored <laughs> this, this would be the movie yep is that this like is gross a- dusty pink you know everything yeah like that gross, it's dusty, just flesh-colored old pink. like you just pulled it out of a trunk from mm-hmm. the 1960s in a in a in an attic somewhere yeah. and it's just like i think i'll wear this because my ancestors <laughs> wore it at some it's point it's that frilly thing that's all frilly yeah. around the cleavage yeah ar- around the, yeah. Co- the, the, big ruffles, the yeah. Really. yeah the ruffles and we have yeah. we have uh a dis- disconcerting cleavage that's what i'm going to call it yeah. because just like it's, it's, it's kind there of disconcerting but it's, it's disconcerting like- cleavage so her, like I don't want to look at it. Her bosoms are pressed together Ugh. in a most unnatural kind it of is. way. It feels wrong. <laughs> and she yeah. like simultaneously is like a f- mid a woman in her mid fifties and also like a three year old in her behavior yeah. at the same time and in the yeah. way she dresses. Yeah. And that's really disturbing. Like she, her hair like p- is pinned up and like right. these it's very the ti- childlike it's the tight curls. curls. Yeah, the tight high curls and everything, and with things little, little uh, uh, things flowers and stuff. Yeah. Flowers yeah. Yeah. Hair, so, so that what Oof. was the? I mean, because I almost got the, the impression I had was that she had like uh, pigtails, but they're not pigtails. No, no, it's just like pinned it's, back. It's pinned back spots, tight yeah. curls. Yeah, and all that. It's just like but if you've ever seen the listener, if you've ever seen um uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane, it feels mm-hmm. it's very in line with that whole situation. Right, like they didn't they got to a certain age but didn't progress uh past that in maturity right this is where they're at this is also i guess you could say this about uh terry and todd both of them are played at this point by the actor mark soper yes uh who i checked his imdb and the guy is, is still working is and he's oh, wow. Been, oh, good yeah. for him well i think oh. he, he 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 is still working but mostly in theater i think he's hey, work like is a work big man. theater he's got guy the re- <laughs> Theaters where he should be, I feel, because <laughs> he wants you got to project to the right, back of the and room. I feel like that's where he excels. It's just like you got he's playing to the back row of the theater, yeah, and that's where he should be. Yeah, he is a piece of work. Well, he's something. Uh, so the whole gist of this is right on right. Thanksgiving. Yes, uh, the family is gathering around the table, mm-hmm. and uh, the, we, the 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 wooden uh uh the the, just the color. Oh, uh, I'm trying to comment on the coloring of this movie. Flesh color. The wooden flesh colored <laughs> beige with the the puke color. green yeah. shag carpeting. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. Everything, everything you ever thought about the '80s <laughs> is true in this movie. It's just it is bl- bland. This it's the b- b- background of everything is just bland. 
I have some of uh, Mark Soper fun fact. I'm oh. looking at his IMDb here. This guy had minor roles in not one, but two John Travolta movies. Oh, he well, was movies. in Phenomenon and Swordfish. Ooh. So good for him. <laughs> wow. If there was uh, anything that made me want to go back and watch Phenomena, it's just to go yes. like, where's Mark Soper right. in this yeah. movie? I might go yeah. back just to see that <laughs> if he's visible. Yeah. I will Google Mark Soper in Phenomena just to see if I'm like, can I see him? And then I might watch that scene. Well, the whole gist of this is, is going to be that like eventually the, the, the one twin, the killer, the, the supposed killer twin gets loose. Right. And heads back to the apartment complex on Thanksgiving night mm -hmm. yes. while the other twin, Terry, is aware of this, right? So you're gonna have you're gonna have the so this is what Mark Soper has to do as an yes. actor. He's gotta play two parts. How do we think that he did and what distinguishes Terry from Todd? Their hair. That's the biggest the thing. Hair. Like, so it's not even an actor. No, not and really. The, and the very the forwardness and the very the shyness of the characters. And like he hunches a little bit more for one. That's like about yeah, he's it. He's very like, he's very more like holding himself. Like uh, uh, one's introverted, one's extroverted. Yes. That's about the extent of it. Right. Like and that and that really that's it. But I mean, <laughs> and, you know, at this time it was like I don't think you needed. Did you need much more? I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, I, I needed them to fight each other on screen. Yeah. Right to fight. Well, we each got other that though. That well, does they actually have a pool. That's different. <laughs> that's not it throwing like punches. Were, yeah, yeah, it looked like they were going to show down no. for a minute, and then it didn't happen. The pool is the easy way out of yeah. having the same actor <laughs> fight himself. Where you I have want the double thrown. Where you're seeing the guy, the double from the other yeah. side yeah. of the yeah. backside. Yeah, thrashing in a pool. Yeah, I needed a little bit more, but. Yeah, we, they end up thrashing in a pool. Give us, give us one punch to knock the other one into the pool, and then fight in the pool. Give us one punch Even or something, that, you know? Yeah, like, no, in this they were just like, let's jump in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's really like drawn to the pool in this movie. It's I mean, everyone ends up there. Yeah, true. Well, this movie was shot on an actual apartment complex called what was it, Candle Cove or Coral Cove okay, or something like that in Jacksonville. Yep. But I think the uh, the pool maybe and the the uh, what was it, the nature path. Yeah, the nature walk. Yeah, <laughs> the nature walk yeah. through the woods was at the University of Florida. Yeah, there North Florida or something like that, West Florida. Um, so we have this dynamic, right? The thing that I guess so there hasn't been a murder, uh, in this family since the horrible night at the drive-in. Sure, yes. But what sets this off on Thanksgiving night at the at the dinner table? I mean, I'm trying to God. remember because yeah, so much remember. happened in this movie. I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to remember how Todd got out of the hospital. We yeah, never me see too. it. We, we never see it. No, do they, we? There's a phone call and mom has to go answer the phone. It's like, oh my God, Terry, your brother Todd has gotten loose. This is an accurate from the, yeah. description of this how she character. Sounds. Yeah. Did yeah? Did we not see anything? No, you don't what see What do it. we see of Todd before he He's just he wandering escaped? down the street. Well, there's the scene where he flings the fucking uh, the, the, oh, the, pie. the pie. Oh, my God. We forgot to talk about that. Yeah, he, just, he grabs that box and opens it up and gets that pie and just squishes it in his hands for like 15... Uh, it's it's too long. Yeah, it's, it's sort of, the director doesn't know where it's to It's awkward. Cut. He's just yeah. like, I'm but just going to crush this pie in my hands. But, like, then, like, yeah. Mark, but then Mark Soper like, gets up and storms across the room and just flings it against the wall. Yes. And that was the like, moment that I knew this movie was special. Yes. yes, and then gets down on his <laughs> knees in front of his mother. And I thought that oh the, the pie throwing moment might have been improvised, and it seemed like he was really proud of that choice right. in that yeah. moment. Yeah, like, because it's this, very going to be big. Yeah, I mean, even the movement is very like pull Ugh. back and slam again. It's very yeah. steep. It looks you know, so like, gross yeah. when it hits the wall. Uh, it was gross. <laughs> just the amount of time that he was fussing with it, and it's fussing. He is fussing with his mother, in which he is crushing a pie in his hands. There is check out our Instagram story; you can much, see a boomerang yes, of him crushing it. There is too hand. much time where he is crushing a pie in his hands and fussing with his mother like, about crushing a pie in his hands, and it's one of the most disgusting. I've seen a lot of shit, yeah. a lot of horror shit, a lot of blood, a lot of guts. <laughs> but this, this is, is where one of the most line. disgusting <laughs> things pie that violence. I have seen. Because you know what? I know the dude getting cut in half is fake. This is real. <laughs> real pie. The pie getting crushed is real and gross <laughs> and disgusting, and I can feel it. Well, and like Ugh. everything else in this movie, the color of the pie was gross. It like, is. It's it got, wasn't it, orange enough. It was like a light brown. It was really gross looking. Yeah, because every and also because it's that light brown, it all uh, like it all just 
kind of blends into the background. Like all everything's just, brown. Everything's and pink brown or in this movie. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Well, it's got that flat kind of. I mean, it's well enough lit, you know. Sure, but yeah. It's, got it's a like flat fluorescent kind of, light yeah. lit, you know. It all feels very like office. No, lighting. no corner is dark in this movie. Yeah, yeah, not at all. The inciting incident at the, is because mom announces that she's going to get married to her latest boyfriend, oh, who's there yes. at the at the table. Oh, He's going to become right. the man yeah, of the this house. Is Thanksgiving, and they're yeah. all sitting around having dinner, and this sets Terry off. Uh, and rekindles his murderous rage yes. because he's got an Oedipal, Oedipal complex where he what because this isn't like spelled out at the beginning of the movie but by the end of it in the pool scene uh-huh. you know where she's like there's just you and me I don't want anybody else just you you're my special boy it's like clearly they have a, a some thing. kind of a thing yeah and he can't handle it when the uh, new guys being introduced no. into the equation. He and can't stand his brother, and that's why he had to get rid of him. Sure. And, and so this turns him into a murderous psychopath. Right. And there's always that like side eye whenever the new boyfriend is talking or being like eh, head of the family or everything. He's always got that like. Oh, yeah. He's planning mm-hmm. to kill him right there. Oh, yeah. He's just like, this is not good. My mother is mine. Yeah. So who are the victims? Because this is a slasher movie. So what what do we got here? Who, who? We got Karen. Who's Karen? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I have to look it up because I she looked familiar. I have to look this up. You know, I thought that too. And I looked her up and I, I don't think did. she's done anything else. But she has that face. She does. Where she seems she's got like. That 80s face. Yeah. Like I've seen her in a bunch of stuff before. And like, I don't think you actually have. Probably not. But you're going to look it up. But I'm going to look it up. Yeah. There's basically at the, the complex. Then we have uh, a Julie bunch of Gordon. some neighbors. And we have uh, lots of single moms, lots of single moms. Well, lots. Two is a lot for this movie <laughs> or any <laughs> for a movie where there's like single ten moms? people total. When we're usually trying to kill teenagers and and all that shit, two single moms in a movie that's a lot. Yeah. Well, we have uh, uh, so there's way more babies the, than I thought there would be in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And there's what there's and the college friends or whatever the yep. tennis players and all this yep. other stuff that all yep. kind of hang out uh, for Thanksgiving. So Terry goes on this. Well, the first victim uh, of his murderous Ray Iyer is the boyfriend, who's also the manager of the complex. Yes. Right. Yes. And so, what does he do to him? Don't remember this. Wait, the boyfriend. He Wait, cuts boyfriend? his first. He cuts his hand off as he's drinking. Old oh, style. The, yeah, the, yeah. He cu- he cuts his beer like, hand he, off. He turns, <laughs> he's holding he cuts a beer. His beer hand off. Yeah. Yes, you are correct. He's, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna spoil he this a movie. Also, good beer. So. how dare he? Yeah, oh, just we're FYI, the show this movie. Well, what's uh, the, the show that he's listening to? Uh, it's an uh, evangelical show. It's just like yeah, the, the, it the had the, like a name. I mean, like it, you said, it like listen next time on. Something with the Lord. God walks with the God walks among you. It is, or it, it is like God walks among you or something like that. Yeah, they play a lot like, of it. it was they like, do. I was They're just, just like dated. right. It's just like it's a full introduction to that. I'm just like, what is? Oh, what's going on in Florida? And it's just like, oh, it's Florida. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jesus he gets his ha- he gets his hand hacked his off. Beer hand which hacked is just off. Like so, I mean, you know, it's one of those movies that has like the the money and the the uh, resources to do the spurting, you know, the blood spurting. Yeah. Out of right. These guys are like, ah, ah, Not ah. only the turnaround spurting blood, but also the mechanical hand. Yeah. Uh, cr- crunching on the beer can, just like ah, I've been cut off. The you know, yeah. the nerves. It die. never lets that can go no never it's just like oh, this is also we talked earlier about how there, there should be a commercial for what do we, what do we say there was a uh, a commercial in the middle of this movie or just like oh, i forgot what it was um but we could do another uh, commercial for, for uh for, for the movie old style oh we we could do a commercial for old style based on this footage <laughs> yeah. there's another scene later where we could do a commercial for something else i forgot what it was it'll come but, back to you the visual yeah. effects makeup were done by ed french Ed what is French the budget on this movie? Eventually did uh, Terminator 2. Uh, oh, nice. Well, that w- with he was working with um, sure, Stan Winston. Stan Winston, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do not know what I'm the... I'm sorry. I don't, the, I, you know. I'm curious because this seems like a... There's some money behind this, it feels like, at least for... You know what it reminded me of? And this is... Okay, you're going to have to tell me if you guys felt this or not, but the, the, the movie that we have covered on this show that I had visions of while I was watching this was a movie called Intruder. And possibly yep. because... Yes. Sam exactly. Raimi's yes. in that movie, right? And Ted Raimi's in this one. Ted, well, Ted Raimi's in that one too. Oh, is it Ted Raimi? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sam Raimi has like a both. cameo at the end. Yeah, okay. But no, Ted right. Raimi's like in it, in it. Definitely on my mind yeah. while watching this movie. Where both of them had like a exceptionally capable level of uh, makeup effects. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. For the type of movie they were doing. You know, if I go back to that movie, I might recommend it. 
Intruder. What, Intruder? Yeah. Intruder? I forget that you didn't recommend I it. I didn't recommend didn't it. No, recommend I'm like, it? you know what? Yeah. Uh, I was too drunk to even comprehend what was going on on that podcast, but I remember liking it a lot. So. Yeah. Intruder. There you go. I'm going to change I'm going to change my vote on Intruder. Okay. That's a, that's a, that's a good cuz the dude gets his history. head sawed in half. Yeah, it's yeah. gory as fuck. Half, gory as fuck. You know what? Not yeah. at the mouth. Uh, no. Between the mouth like, and the top of the lip. Like the top of the nose. It's, yeah, it's like right It's there. under the nose and a, oh, but like through the top of your teeth basically. Yeah. I, well, fuck whatever the podcast said. I recommend Intruder. Yeah, I'm going to go back. I don't, Retroactively nobody, recommend Nobody is letting Intruder. us know the budget of, of this yeah, movie. I'm sure it's low. You should not know. Yeah. I'm going to go with like $800,000. Probably like yeah. they lived at the at the it, complex. It would, have, I don't right. know. it would have all gone to the effects. I think it seems like it because they didn't invest in talent except for Louise Lasser. Sure. Right? She was the only known commodity. Um, the director John Grisser, I believe. Something Sorry, man. I don't have his name in front of me. He also did, I think, one other movie. I think we've uh, the uh, he did a movie called Scalpel Satchel Scalpel Suture <laughs> Scalpel. I'm gonna go with. <laughs> oh, we well, need to figure this out. Yeah, I think it's a well-regarded uh, movie. Scalpel. 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 There you go. Oh, you do a movie called Scalpel? I wonder what that's Yeah, I remember about. it's got the woman with the band jaws over her face. Uh, uh, I think yeah, he, the poster looks cool. Yeah. yeah, That it, is probably the only one. And that movie. arrow, right. I think, that put that out good. also. Um, so, yeah, it has decent special effects. And some of those are, I mean, there's a guy gets his head cut off in this movie. And, like, it looked like uh, that. It's him. But it's not like a visual effect where you're no, actually no, no, seeing not it. At all. It's like, like that's they, a pretty good sculpt they or cast mold of that guy's head. head. It's good. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. and it's hanging up underneath the stairs at some yeah. point. The girl gets By cut court. in half and it looks pretty good too. Yeah. Yeah. The psychiatrist mm-hmm. comes yeah. to visit. Yeah. That's pretty good. Gets and her knees she gets, cut off? So yeah, because he's yeah, because the uh uh Todd has escaped, and so the psychiatrist and her one meathead bodyguard <laughs> have come to track him down. She wants to if, be the Dr. Loomis. Right. Because <laughs> if a, uh, a person who killed people ten years earlier escapes, you send one psychiatrist. Yep. And yeah. a, a meatball, don't call the police. Don't, definitely don't no. do that. Can't have anybody no. can't have any cops in this movie. Don't you they send- ask about that? Like, shouldn't we call the cops doctor? And she's like, No, you don't want to call the cops. You go that way. And she wants to be a doctor. Lewis, I'm going to go you know? into the woods and go look. I'm, for she said that. <laughs> I'm going to go into the woods <laughs> and try and find and you. Her. Go on the nature walk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other guy, sure. you go on the nature walk. <laughs> yeah, because the manager is like, "Well, we've got this nature walk, and over there we've just got a bunch of patios." So she's like, "Okay, you go back you to your the office." Patios. And then Meathead, you check the patios. I'm going to go into the woods, and then we're like, "This is just the woods." It mm-hmm. is the woods. And we're just like, "Is this the nature walk?" Because no one thought this out. Mm-hmm. We see the nature walk later. So this woman was just walking through the woods. Yeah. Sure. The nature walk being like this little cut, this little bridge that goes right, through. Right. Yeah. The, Which but I'm sure goes through most. She's of hacked in half. We don't actually see the hacking, but no. we do see the aftermath. In which case, they do have like both parts of her are moving. Bravo. And separated. Yes. There is some art, uh, articulation, some machinery, some. Uh, yeah. There's a little something to it. Yeah. In that, because things are moving around. We're not just seeing like, oh, they cut a dummy in half and put some gore on it, and there it is. Like shit's moving. Mm-hmm. The hand that had the old style was moving. Yeah. Little robot hand. But you the know what doesn't sell were. it though is like in a lot of these scenes, uh, you still see the people breathing or they're doing so. I mean, it's like they act- they're not good they're actors, so you can't. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's still movement. Yeah. The office manager. There was a couple times when they cut to him, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can blinking. see you're moving, blinking. Yeah. yeah. Like, Hold your breath. You yeah. know, and we're going now. You yeah, know. stop breathing. Yeah, unless it's the editor just picking. Like that's when the blood looks the best. Yeah, I mean <laughs> probably, <that's>, probably <laughs> yes. And it, you know, it's not cranberry sauce. It's not. It's cranberry not sauce. cranberry it sauce. Not cranberry sauce. You know how we know that, Colin? It's not cranberry. They sauce. said it a lot <laughs> in this movie. Um, cranberry sauce. <laughs> it's like, do you think we got that joke across? Did we give us another one? Well, what else do we have as far as like a Thanksgiving? Somebody gets killed with a Thanksgiving uh, like fork. The the yeah the fork in the neck. The two the two pronged yeah like, like turkey fork. Yeah, yeah yeah you know what yeah. we're talking about right in the neck <laughs> right in the neck. And like they it kind of like wiggles it around in there. It's pretty gross. It's like, it's a good kill. I'm around. just like ooh that looks yeah yeah he's. Mm-hmm. He's moving some mm-hmm. shit around in there. Like mm-hmm. I like the kills in this movie. I'm yeah. just like that feels like you killed that dude. Although it seems like most of. Uh, Terry's weaponry is the machete. The chosen. Mostly. Yeah. Well, there was one where he killed the, um, he kills this uh, woman who I guess is a neighbor 
that uh, he, I don't think we actually see him kill her. She's the mother of the, the, the single baby. mother. The, yeah, right. The, the, the other the dude mother. over. The baby, yeah. gets beheaded. And, yeah. The nerdy dude comes over. Yeah. Well, there's a scene that was kind of like, it wasn't like a throwaway, but I understood why they had to shoot it with like, it's a close up of yes. her chest with the knife in it. Yeah. He pulls the machete out and then. The camera pans up to her face, and you're this like, "This looked good, man. That takes like, why are we seeing so much of this?" And then I'm like, "Oh, it's because they're selling that like they didn't cut away, yeah, and, and like it right. looks like he pulled the knife right it out of her chest. Looked yeah. good, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did. Like I liked it. I'm just like, ooh, they pulled something off there because mm-hmm. whatever angle they're pulling it out, it looks like he pulled it out of her chest. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they pulled that off very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're still not saying it's Tom Savini level, but like uh, no, Mr. But French has got like, like a future ahead of him. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing about. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it was just like, oh, all right. It piqued my interest. Well, it's wow. of higher quality than anything else in this movie. Like the special effects are in the, a league of their own yes. as far as quality compared to literally every other it's aspect. It's like a showcase. Movie. But see, right, yeah, is, yeah, exactly. This is the thing that I think, you know, like uh, the people who don't like slasher movies from a moralistic standpoint miss. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like these the movies. Art. Yeah, it's like a kind of a this because it's like this movie is a show off reel. Yeah. for uh, Ed French, the movie's built around the idea that we're going to do all these kills, and it gets to do all this these illusions or whatever. It's like a cinematic uh, sleight of hand trick. It is, you know. Uh, while watching this movie in in seeing the uh, more um, more gory and bloody effects, uh, I laughed a lot during them, and I'm I, I always wonder like. How would quote unquote regular people react to me in my reaction to how this stuff is going off? Because I see a good, a good blood gag, and I'm just I, and I laugh at it because I'm like, that's good. I mm-hmm. like that. It's entertaining. But it just seems from an outside person, I would guess that I'm just laughing at a dude who just got his hand cut off. Tipper Gore would say, "You're what's wrong with America." I would, Sean. I would think so. <laughs> I think she would. But I'm just like, no. I'm, that's just me. I appreciate. You're the reason we need that, censorship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, um, but they're pulling it off. I know. It's like that's cool. Yeah, because it just seems like you're you're sitting there with an audience full of maniacs. I suppose it really does. It, la- it would, wouldn't it? And just but like these people are nuts. I think there's other people who misconstrue it too. Is like it's a uh, you know the um, uh, release, the tension release. Yes, yeah, yeah. That you're laughing at this stuff, but I'm like, no, I think you. La- some of us are laughing because of just like you know that's so awesome that they yeah. pulled that off. Yes, and like look how they you know accomplished this thing. Yeah, you can see the bone in his arm that yeah, they just yeah, cut yeah, off. Yeah, it's yeah. like they they put some thought into this. That's mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah, yeah. cool. That's it's the word. Cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I know it's disgusting. Sure. It's gross. It's bloody, <laughs> but it's cool. But it's still cool. They did it. So while Mark Soper is trying to calibrate his performance between uh, a very childlike. Yeah, very uh, true. Well, he's. Terry is uh, at some point like he's trying to pretend it because he's running around he's killing all of his friends basically yes and then as he's coming up to the rest of them he's trying to play it off like you know hey what you know there's nothing nothing going on here uh but eventually he like kind of loses his mind and then he's just doing the like ah oh, you know what you're no fun it's like i want to have fun i want to go do this and yeah 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 where Todd is uh, uh, very childlike himself and yes. kind of running around like trying to he's like kind of reverted back to being a little kid. He just wants to go home and, you know, be with his mom. And uh, I think he runs into there's a couple of scenes where we don't know or at least the characters don't know who they're running into. Right. If it's Terry or Todd. Yes. Terry's Karen. girlfriend runs into Karen. Or sorry. Karen, Karen runs, runs into, into to ter- to to Todd, Todd. Yes. thinking that it's Terry. <laughs> yes. I want you to make love to me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I've thought about it a long time. We really haven't spent a lot of time with each other this Uh, summer. I want you to make love to me. What do you think? I want, this is, uh, uh, (laughs) it's my dream for any woman who approaches me. It's just like, I want you to make love to me. This is a very confident relationship (laughs) they got going on here. Everybody's so horny in this movie. This movie has an above, we haven't mentioned this, but probably an above average quotient of TNA for this type of movie. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, there was. And there was a certain point I'm just like, wow, we're not really getting any nudity in this. And then they just went like, here you go. (laughs) We're turning on the tap. What are you talking about there? It started with nudity right at the jump. Driving. I mean, it did, but it it felt uh, like not exploited. It felt like very minor. 
because you're just seeing breasts and all that stuff. But it, it gets definitely more uh, explicit later on. Yeah. Then you get the shower uh, scene. Randomly. The random shower it's scene. It's random. Uh, the nudity in this is random because they're just like, it's like jump cut to like nudity. Because we get, it is, because you just like shower. She's in the shower. Yeah. Like, oh, she's, it's a diving board. Like, but it was it even is, like, wasn't there like literally a jump cut of like, it was Todd talking to someone or something, and then it jumped to like one of the neighbors, like literally just dialing on a rotary phone, and like, did you, that's all you saw was them dialing, and then it cut to the shower scene. Like, there was some oh, random yeah, yeah. insert yeah, 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 of like random, just yeah. a phone, like someone yeah. picking up a phone, and like, that's all you see. There's like, like, little cuts to the mother. And then like a, mundane like, things. It is oh, mundane no. things. And it then was, cut to it was the dude. Okay, so this is there's <laughs> like there's this whole subplot in the movie, but uh, the Who the dude that it cut way? to was there. There's the uh, how else do we say? He's like the jock, right? The yes. jock dude. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. then there's the party. What girl. I thought was the smartest guy in the movie. That's right. Yeah, oh, was yep. not. Okay, so the the Odyssey. About this whole subplot is fascinating. This is going to be fantastic, listener, and you're going to have to stick with us on this because I this think so. is the good one, right? <laughs> so so the one good one. They uh, the jock arrives, I believe, uh, you know, with a friend of his, and Karen's like, "There's a crazy person out there." Yes. Todd is back, and he's like, "Okay, I'll protect you." And then <laughs> they go to the party. Girl says, "We got to. We should go back to my place." Right, so back at the at the place, this dude Jock pairs off with party guy, party girl. Right? Yes, he does. They go to the bedroom. <laughs> right, they start yeah. making out, and you're like, okay, here, oh, here we go. The, yeah, this is the wh- what we think is going to lead to like the sex scene, and then the death in the middle of the sex scene. Right, which because we, that's we, how it goes. It is because we've seen enough Friday the Thirteenth at yeah. this point where people get killed in the middle of sex. That's right. just what happens. What we don't expect is that. In the middle of just making out, they're going to have a brilliant idea. A brilliant idea. Where they say to themselves, you know, there's a psycho killer running around. You know what would be really fun is if we (laughs) put you, party girl, in an extremely intricate facial makeup. Yes. To where you might be unrecognizable almost. (laughs) Unrecognizable, and it would take a few uh, hours hours to apply and dry and to be, you know. To have it on you, yes. And we're going to scare the folks in the other room. We're gonna, they're going to come into the bedroom and go, boo. You know, actually, you think we're dead and boo. Right. And, and she's not, got all not this makeup any, on. Yeah, not of any like, uh, oh, we heard a noise or anything. Like the people no, she screamed. The, the people, oh, did she scream? Yeah, she screamed. Oh, okay. So she they did, went yeah, in there. Yeah. It was like, oh, my God, she's dead. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at it. We were just kidding with because there's a psycho guy out there. Oh, you people are so awful and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All right. So then. So they, they uh, scare them. Sure. Right. So after that, we get the shot of him like sitting there twiddling his thumbs. Yes. But she has to go take a shower. I think yep. we even because she has to wash right. all this I think shit we cut off. Back to the mom before we even got to this point. This was. Oh part, yeah. Well, that's that's of, this that's part like the, the B plot. Yeah, we, we got to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that's where we're going after we complete okay, this yeah, uh, yeah, scenario. Yeah, this is, yeah. So just so we follow this logic, so they go to make out in the bedroom. They stop to apply a bunch of makeup. They scare the other people. Then she takes a shower, gets yes. naked in the shower. Yep. Then yeah. you're like, okay, well, what's going to happen after that? What well, I mean, they're going to go play shower, tennis. I play tennis <laughs> in the middle yeah. of the night. Yeah. 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 Right. Which has got to be like one in the morning at this point. I think yeah. so. On Everyone knows you night. shower before you go play sports. Sure. Yeah. That's how I do it. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> you'll be fresh for that tennis match, you know, yeah, which is exactly. where like somebody's going to get killed with a tennis racket or something on this tennis court. That'd be dope. Shove a tennis ball someone down someone's throat. Right. But that does not happen. No, not there at all. is They're the just idea playing that, tennis. And Terry is out there and he does some stuff where he, you know, fakes him out with the lost ball and all that. All right. And so they're like, ah, okay, fine. We're going to go in. Where do they go? They go to the pool and they start fucking on a diving board. Now, this may not be. We, we only know this because we cut directly to them fucking yes. on a diving board. Both well, completely fucking. naked. Everyone's completely yeah. naked. Yeah, lying like naked we, on a diving there was, board. There was like a, a, a conversation on the tennis court. And the next time we see them, they're fucking hard on a cut diving board. <laughs> it's a hard cut because I'm like, who is this? Yeah. Who are these? Is this them? Well, I had I that a lot that. because their hairstyles kept changing. Right, oh my yeah. god, yeah. yeah. It's like when she goes Continuity to dinner. Continuity does not exist yeah. in this movie. She changes her hairstyle. When she's like party girl, it's different and all this. So I'm like, who is, is this a different uh, person? This time around, I was like, oh, it's the same person yeah. for all these scenes. There was no connective tissue to get us to them fucking on Yeah, because they met her 
the party girl at the when they were playing uh, football at the beginning. Like her and her mom. Oh, came right, by. right, right. Yes. And they're going to go to dinner. Okay. True. And then at the, the pool, then that's where Terry shows up with a machete and. Yeah, and then he just shows up and then he like cuts his throat and then fucks her up. And then stashes them in the uh, sauna naked right, where yes, every once yes, in a while yes, we yes, can yes. still get our nudity quotient because somebody will go into the sauna and find the naked bodies, right, which are true. still very much alive. Obviously, the actors yep, are still see breathing. Yeah, we, we, I saw a lot of neck movement <laughs> yeah. going on in those scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Intercut with this. Now, how many scenes does okay. it take to actually lay out it's the five. sequence that I just gave you? I think it's at least oh, yeah. well, that one that you yeah. just gave us. I mean, that's like. It's like 40 minutes of the movie. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. An intercut with that is the greatest, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest, the greatest example of someone being in a different movie than the rest of the movie that we've been watching, mostly because she's isolated. This is Louise Lasser. Louise Lasser, because she's by herself in, in the scenes that we're talking about. She's by herself. Well, because she's upset that Terry has revealed like, you know, that Todd has escaped from the mental right, institution. Yes. She's pissed off at that. Yes. Everybody leaves the apartment, leaving her at home. Right. And <laughs> leaving, that's that's key. Leaving her at home alone. <laughs> so what does she do? How is this this riveting plot, uh, how does it unfold? She, oh, I mean, she starts by eating Thanksgiving leftovers on the floor in front I mean, of the fridge with the, the door open. Start. I mean, she's been <laughs> That's drinking. what I'm saying. That's like, the, that's, that's, we thought that was weird, and it right. only just <laughs> she kept going from there. She started drinking. We're just like, all right, I get that because the you know you know maybe all, they did this. Well, that's what I'm saying. Did they put did they put this in out of order? The first shot we get is her sitting. I mean, it's like a person's most depressed. Like that's like this would yeah. be yeah. The kitchen you know, door is open. You're just eating yeah, if the you, macaroni. Cheese folks, if you want to know what I'm doing at like <laughs> six o'clock on a Sunday night, <laughs> this is it. This is it right here. <laughs> where you just like, hey, what's in the fridge? I'm gonna sit here and find out. Like, like she can't even be bothered to sit at a table no, and eat it. That's that's, that's, that's like, going too far. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm I'm gonna I'm forking the macaroni, but I'm just grabbing the green beans and yeah. shoving them into my mouth. Like and she it's, is it's it's it is bottom rock bottom level of just like I don't care anymore. But yeah. this is this comes back to what I'm saying about like is she a, a woman or is she a baby? Because like the way she's sitting there in that pink dress with her she's hair up like that and like shoving her, her hands, hands yeah, yeah it's, it's very not, infant like and it's it is. that and adds she's to regressing. The nature. I think so. Throughout the process of this movie, I think she is regressing. She cannot deal with the fact no. that that uh, her son is you know Maybe responsible murder, for murder, yeah, yeah. yeah, and is now loose and it's ruined her Thanksgiving right. and all this other stuff. <laughs> She, we see subsequent scenes. I mean, because again, this is about 40 minutes you got to fill. Yeah. So like when we cut back to her next time, she's uh, vacuuming. She's vac- under the bed. Well, with the gl- glass of wine in with one the wine. hand. Because everything yes. she does from here on out in the movie, she has a glass of wine. Yeah. There's a one scene which I thought was a fantastic display of acting prowess where she was dialing the phone. This is a rotary phone, right? Was yeah. she dialing a rotary phone? I think so. Or it was a push button phone. And uh, with a wine a bottle filling up a wine glass That's at the same time. That's on her Instagram, Bravo. too, if you want to see a boomerang. Right, I put that up there. <laughs> It was, Bravo. yeah, it was. Yeah. It was a bra- bravura, yeah. like yeah. applause worthy moment mm-hmm. from Louise That's, Lasser. Yeah. We also, she does, uh, she does meet Todd. Todd comes back, but she's drunk. She passes out eventually from uh, drinking all this wine. I mean, so she she passes doesn't realize out. She takes him. a shower. She's, I think that is a she lot. Passes happens. Well, well, she passes yeah. out and gets, and Todd comes, excuse me, comes back. But she thinks it's Terry. She thinks it's Terry. But Carrie gives me, give me a kiss. Right, Todd yeah. carries her to bed. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, all sorts of Freudian shit. Yeah, this all on. yeah up and down Freudian shit. I mean, she ends up taking a shower. We don't see her in the shower. No, no, no. But she ends up like because we keep cutting back to her for little yeah. tiny scenes. She goes into the bathroom. Or she stands there, I think, like drinking. Right. Drinking wine, the last of her wine, and and slowly backs away into her bathroom. Cut. That's it. That's it. It's like 10 (laughs) seconds. That's it. We keep cutting back. But this this all leads up to the crescendo of her performance. Yes. Indeed. Uh, Which. (laughs) Okay. So she's the whole whole movie, right? Uh, 
Oh, is it the whole movie? She's been trying to get a hold of maybe this is the scene, just the scene. It feels she tried no, to call. It feels like the whole movie. She was calling him before. She's trying to call boyfriend. her boyfriend, the manager. At the end, she says, "I've been trying to get a hold of you all night." When she yeah. was running she, and there, it feels so. like she has. He yeah. lives in the complex. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to get a point across. Maybe here. like three doors, away. <laughs> three doors away, but probably she's been calling and he doesn't answer. And so finally, this leads to this awesome this, scene. All right, all right, you, all right, you skipped over it. She's been calling and doesn't answer. Does not encompass how much she's been calling him it, it, for 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. She's been calling him so much. Where it's just like, <laughs> get up, walk three doors, yeah, and that's see weird. where he's at. <laughs> Wait, because it gets to that point. No, 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 Sean. What you do is when he doesn't answer the phone after you've been calling for 30 minutes, you call the operator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. You don't understand operator. I've been calling. And then she gives the operator her life number story. Yes. Yeah. For 30 minutes. And then she says, like, my son murdered people when he was 12. No, she did the whole. I thought it was. A, she was like, you know, he. It's because my son, he ran away from school. Right. Well, not really school. <laughs> ah, I forget it. it was a mental it's institution. A mental institution. And, and it's like she, it's right. dawning on her. Right. Okay. She really is like acting in a different fucking movie. Yeah. She's no. taking this as like, <laughs> this is completely serious. And this is her serious. Oscar moment. Yeah. She's acting like she, it's like she thinks she's doing like Ellen Burstyn's story in Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. she thinks that that's the movie she has right yeah, now. Yeah. I would agree with that. But she's also her acting stuff. Right, is so dramatically different than everybody else it's in the so, movie. It's so soap opera acting. I, it's, would say. I don't even know if it's soap opera. It's so uh, understated it's, that sometimes you're like, is she talking? I can't hear it. Like, is she doing anything? She's just kind of being comatose and like right. reacting very slowly to things. And you're like, is there life there? Or are we <laughs> supposed to like, okay, let's go? But I get what she's doing. It's just like, that's. That's a different movie that you're yeah. in. Right. <laughs> you know? Definitely. This is not the pace of this movie. No, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> but this scene on the couch with her on the phone oh, talking to the God. operator. I mean, you know, it's a good one because at some point uh, the camera begins that slow push. Slow push. Uh -huh. But this is after we've cut back to her twice already. When we cut back to her the third time, that's when we begin the slow push in. <laughs> yes. The third time. The third oh, no, no, time. no, no, no. I, it pushed in on the second. On the third, it, it did pulled the slow back. Oh, did it? Yeah, it pulled back. Oh, because we we get both. Yeah, yeah. thank God. Because yeah. this is her Oscar moment. It you got to get get it. Is. You know. I love that it ends on like a scene where she's like she dials and it rings. She's like, oh, thank God, I've been calling you all night. And uh, I think you've got the wrong number. I think that's the climax one. of that. That is. Uh, Isn't there a scene where she tells the dude? Uh, uh, maybe she's drunk. When she's talking to Terry, or it's Todd after he's brought her. Uh, no, no, is it Terry? If you're going out, like, yeah, don't wear that. Take the blue sweater. That's and it's just to Terry. Like, what she's the talking to Terry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Louise Lasser was in Frankenhooker. Did we say she was in Frankenhooker, a movie that we did here on this oh, podcast? Two steps to the wall, huh? Where, yeah, that's right. Oh. One more Louise Lasser movie. <laughs> And we will put her on the wall. But she I also mean, did for this performance alone, yeah. I'd put her in the hallway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus. She made weird choices in that movie also, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. in the like one or two scenes that she was like. like um, so this builds to, uh, so the other main plot, I suppose, is that Todd and Terry are eventually going to face off. And they but do kind of early yeah. in the movie where Todd gets a hold of a plastic gun. <laughs> yes. A toy gun, a spray paint, like a cowboy silver. gun, yeah. like yep. like an old a school. cap, a cap gun, yep. if you will. You know, it looks okay from a distance, but this, this is no, the no, director. No. There are certain scenes where there's a real there's gun. a real gun, and there are certain scenes where they have spray painted in in shiny yeah. silver a cap. Gun. Don't exactly. use that one in your close up. No, exactly. Not, that's it. In the close up, <laughs> no, don't do that. Far away, sure, yes. Mm -hmm. In the close up, bad idea. Okay, but they do. They um, do indeed. But there's a there's a moment where they actually uh, Todd armed with the gun shows up at the front door and Terry opens the door and it's like, oh, this is the moment. Right. Mm. You know, and Todd, I think Karen is there at the same point. So it's the two guys and Karen and Todd cannot shoot his brother. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so he just like, runs off. He has the opportunity the and just runs off. Yes, you are correct. Well, at the end of the film, where everything climaxes in the uh, pool, pool we're room, in the pool. Yeah, right. Um, 
we can't I, I can't put forward enough how much there is just <sighs> Terry just like fucking with people and you so you get him like jumping on a diving board and just hanging out. Hello. And just hello. Yeah. And like so he's just you know he's just high. He is so we get that like he's display like of craziness. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. kid who's just fucking with people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. We get a lot of that. Because we have what's her name come in the pool with the baby? Karen. Karen comes you in the know, pool you need to the baby protect a baby more where of a better role place to take it than the pool. Than I thought a baby would play. <laughs> That's right. She's realized at this point that people are dead in the in the apartment complex. The baby, uh, she's being chased by this is the single mother's baby. Karen mm-hmm. finds yes. swaddles the baby up and runs. Where does she go? Where everybody would go. I mean, the safest place. The pool, the obviously. I mean, right? Yeah. Because you couldn't fall. And there's a real baby in there yeah. at but, certain and points. And she sits with her back to the pool on the ledge of the pool holding Ugh, the baby. Made like, me nervous. Like, whoo, at least we made it this far, baby. Yeah. No one can hurt us now. Well, yep. he's not going to come up from the pool. Maybe that's what she's thinking. She's thinking, think so. you know, he's not going to come out of the water. Yeah, no, that won't but happen. Let me just sit in a perfect position for me to hit, for him to just kick me into the pool, though, you know, yeah, with, yeah, while yeah, I'm holding yeah, this like, baby. Yeah, yeah. This is Sparta. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Right in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is where the big showdown does take place. Where Terry and yes. Todd finally confront each other, and uh, there's a lot of uh, they get immediately kick each other into the pool. Yes. There's a lot of fighting between the double and right, Mark Soper. The same actor, yeah. Um, this has a is this a surprising revelation or resolution? I'm not sure. Everything was surprising in this movie because <laughs> yeah. it's so fucking random. They're just like, I didn't expect that because you were way over there. <laughs> Five minutes ago. Oh, so wait, wait, actually, how? So Louise Lasser shows up. That's yeah, a, she does. This she shows a surprising up the thing because, but she got there because eventually she did leave her apartment and find out found out that her boyfriend who got his hand hacked off while he was right. ha- 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 having dead. a beer and his head dead. split in half. He, his head falls oh, off his shoulders gross. and it breaks it's open. Like it's <laughs> it's. <laughs> The brains were white, and I didn't like that. That's no, what made it well, gross. Well, that's the thing. I'm just like, but that is, I think, the sign of a successful uh, special effect. Yeah. It's like, that's gross. You're like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And I don't want to see that again. Not only that, is the head detached, yeah, but, but it breaks open when it hits the yeah, half like a sp- coconut, yeah, man. You know, that is successful. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because when we're just yeah. like, ugh, no, I don't want to see that anymore. I just like, you're that used to nice. seeing brains be like pink or gray, and yeah. this was just yeah, like just white. Like, like white no. little, like, Not good. wiggly worm. Ugh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Bravo to your disgusting Didn't me. like it. It, looked, it was kind of gross. <laughs> Didn't I either. But and yes. like, it had those strings of like goo when it separated, yeah. you know? Ugh. Yep. <laughs> we don't like strings of goo. No. Well, I thought. Well, she gets uh, Louise Lasser gets the gun, the she second does. gun. She's got the gun, who's from which the was sitting so. on the desk with the boyfriend. Yeah, and so she goes to the pool to confront her killer son. She's so embarrassed. So there he is standing there. So she plugs the, him away right on know, the opposite end of the pool and shoots him dead because he's standing there. And Terry's got the the knife and all that other stuff. Right. She shoots him like three times, right in the face. She does. She shoots him in the chest, like once in the face, and un- keeps unloading. Yeah, she keeps going for it. I'm gonna make a letterbox list of all the movies that have climaxes at a pool. Yeah, it we follows. just watched That's Jennifer's even... Body that had one too. The There's something. So There's a lot of them. We're gonna go with some kind of Freudian cat thing people. Here. The original cat yeah, people. It doesn't climax at the pool. Well, but it's got like a key scene. It has pool. a yeah, the awesome famous, scene. Yeah. yeah. Um, faculty. I haven't seen the faculty. I, w- sorry, I wasn't here. Not here for no. Oh wow. Ricochet wow. was in an okay. empty pool. Um, Jesus. All right. So, so then with our killer dead, right? Yeah. There's this the tender pole. moment where oh, she yes. embraces Todd and says, "Like, you know, I, you know, you're my boy. I don't want anybody but you. You, you know, and me. You're we don't bestest. need anybody else. You're the, yeah, the you're bestest. The bestest <laughs> says it multiple times. She says all of these things like six or seven times. That's why I'm like, okay, she's expecting that they're going to edit yeah. this, and she's right. doing the multiple takes, and instead they just leave it all. In. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But, and eventually she says." You're my, you're, you're, I'm, it's just you and me now, Terry. And all of a sudden, the music kicks in, and Todd is, I'm Todd. I'm Todd. I'm I was Todd. I'm Todd. I and, was not expecting this. <laughs> I was not expecting this. The reaction? I, I thought she knew who. who I, was I who. did too. I thought she, I thought it had dawned on her in I, the previous yes. scene that, oh my God, Todd has, it's actually, I've blamed the wrong son all my life. Yes. But it turns out that's not the case. No. 
She can't tell her own kids apart. She can't tell her kids apart. Apparently not. So she then she's like horrified that she shot the kid that she loves. Yes. And the kid that she thinks is the killer is there in her arms. Well, this is tragic. A tragic tragic. ending, ladies and gentlemen. It would be if it wasn't so hilarious. It is it's very hilarious. For her. The way they're like embracing each other is really uncomfortable. It is. Yeah. It's like we're at seconds away from them making out. Yeah. Well, for the like entire he had movie. his face down like in her chest for a while yeah, too. There's no, and her, that was really and her, uncomfortable. And her, 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 her breasts are not, it's not presented well. Just yeah. like it made me un- her, uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. The way they're presented in this movie. I don't know. Oh, that's it's what weird. they're going for. Maybe yeah, I they, think got, it is. Maybe I think they it is. got the reaction that they were intending. I'm mm-hmm. Probably. Because there is clearly a gigantic uh, Oedipal. Mm-hmm. Very big. Yes. Thing happening here. Happening here. And then because she can't take she it. She can't take it. And it builds this crescendo of him screaming, I'm Todd, and her going, oh, my God, or whatever. And she shoots herself. She mm-hmm. does. She got the gun and she. She blows her brains out. Mm-hmm. I was not expecting this. Yeah. Not at all. In which case, mm-hmm. we're like, <clears throat> the movie ends on a free, oh, Karen and the baby get away. Don't, don't, yep. don't yeah, worry. They, they they're just fine. go like, Todd screwed, Fuck, this is more than I can deal with. Yeah. I'm leaving. Yeah, Todd is screwed. Yeah. They, the, um, Todd you is hear screwed. The, you hear the sirens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because no one's there to be like, hey, yeah, uh, Todd didn't do this. So, but Todd, but I always figured that was where they were going. Like, if Todd kills Terry, then Terry's done and he will have no more like his uh, <clears throat> he won't be able to kill anybody else. Right. But Todd is going to take the blame for every other killing that Terry did. Yep. And yep. that's the way it's going to go. But as long as he's Todd, going back uh, to the asylum. Yeah. As long as Terry is dead, that's fine. Todd will take the blame. Yeah. That's what I figured. He's going back to the asylum. No doctor, though. The doctor, ironically, did I say it, is played by the movie's producer because an actress oh. didn't show up. So she produced the movie. Oh, OK. That explains her yeah uh the music in this movie i also want to give a shout out uh whatever yeah it's what synth wave or retro wave people (laughs) now this is what you're trying to do right it sounds exactly like this music (laughs) yeah (laughs) like something by laser hawk no Mm, i don't know that's a good no that's a great that is actual yeah laser hawk or carpenter brute I don't, I don't know, those out there. I don't know okay. what the kids sure. listen to. Words. So. Yep. Um, nope. It's pretty good. It, feel, it sounds almost like something out of maybe like a Nightmare on Elm Street. It was the sure. closest thing. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. with the synth, the synthesizer of that, like the same one that Charles Bernstein used. <laughs> yeah. You know, same programming. Um, we should probably. I think that's it, Colin. I think yeah, that's we, it. We're going to tell you it. whether or not we, we have wrung it dry. Do we recommend this rage. movie? You're going to have to wait and find out. First of all, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. He's going to bring us our mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I, I hope that's pumpkin pie in his hands. Whatever that mushed he's, up. He's, he it's not cranberry sauce. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's not. You're right, Colin. It's not cranberry sauce. Oh boy, <laughs> we we did not drive home enough. How much that joke is driven. I thought home. it was a good joke. And it is. It's like it's a it, movie that takes place on Thanksgiving. They don't have it. There's a they scene with nothing, the turkey. Yeah. yeah, it has no atmosphere. I mean, it's not like <laughs> you know. And the only thing they have to remind you that this takes yes. place on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Is that it's that joke? Right. And I like that, the, the, and it feels like they knew that, and they're just like, mm. we have to keep going with this joke. Just so yeah. I'm for that. Just like, it. Keep going. It's just not very often in any movie you see a character repeat a joke like three times to just themselves. Like, <laughs> right? You know, but like literally, because just say the same like, thing over and over I again think to this themselves. Is funny, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because he's licking it. I think. Yeah, he is. That's the first time. Constantly licking it. That's not cranberry sauce. No, it's not cranberry sauce. Um, So let's uh, tell you how you can join the fun here, the interactive Saturday Night Freak Show experience, by uh, writing in or following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Blood Rage, Andrew John writes in and says, it's not cranberry sauce. (laughs) Is that all the mail for this? (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) He says, oh, hell yes. Watch the unrated, unedited cut. It adds all the great gore back in. It's a very different movie without it. We watch it every Thanksgiving. I bet it's just like a 
family drama without it, right? Sure. I can't okay. imagine. It's like a Lifetime yeah. movie, probably. Yes. You know? Yeah. Very but curious. Mike, I mean, we were mentioning My Bloody Valentine earlier. If you didn't listen to that movie, uh, that episode, My Bloody Valentine, if you've only seen the theatrical cut, you have not actually seen no. that movie no. with the gore added back in. It's yep. a, you know, it's one of the best slasher movies of the 1980s. But again, wait, wait till February. That's right. Uh, Shot Factory's, Shot Factory's it doing it. Uh, Nick Siebel writes in and says, wow, this is a so bad, it's good type of movie. It's got horrible acting, cheap gore effects, tons of nudity, and Ted Raimi. It's not cranberry sauce. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Uh, still waiting on Eli Roth to make Thanksgiving. All from the, the yeah, trailer. Yeah, the trailer. From, Thanksgiving. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's capitalizing on Thanksgiving openness, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. A, Take family, advantage of a family that. gathering around to feast that's that opens itself up to well, horror when we've proven that like Christmas horror movies can be successful so let's do Thanksgiving I know like, a, Krampus made a fuck ton of money put, like there should be more mm-hmm. well there Thanksgiving the Eli Roth one I'm like that looks like the horror the movie that we never got this yeah. the yeah. Thanksgiving slasher we never got mm-hmm. uh yeah, but uh, then there, I guess there's thanks, thanks killing, thanks killing, thanks yep. killing. But apparently that's only like an hour and ten minutes it's, long. It's not good. Not okay. Uh, Travis Legler says <laughs> next <I haven't>, week. <laughs> he says I haven't seen this movie, but just like the Blob remake, Alligator, Phantasm, Hell Knight, Chopping Mall, and the Meg. There you go. Halloween 2018 and Ip Chapter One and Two. I'm sure I'll see it after hearing your podcast. You guys make the drive to work on Saturday mornings and afternoons. If I can't finish the podcast, wait, you may. Uh, if I can't finish it in the morning, so much the better. He likes our show. Oh. We like you, That's sir. That's awesome. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you. very kind. We, we like that you like us. I, I know that. how that goes, though, because like, <laughs> you ever like wake up in the morning, you're like, oh my God, there's a new episode of this podcast today, and you're like kind of stoked for your commute so that you can listen to it? That's the only reason yeah. I don't like driving anymore. Yeah. Like, oh, I can listen to this. <laughs> this is yeah. the time yes. you have. To it listen is. To your it is the but, time to listen like, to the podcast. If it if it runs too short for your commute, that's devastating. Because <laughs> you're, you're like, like it's ah! over already, and I'm not even to work yet. Like yeah. that sucks. But if you just listener, if you just let it autoplay, it will go to the <laughs> previous episode, yeah. mm-hmm. and you can just continue hear to the catalog. And in all seriousness, I know there's a lot of podcasts out there, but the mm-hmm. fact that you're listening to this yes. one yep. means the fast is growing. To us. We <laughs> love it. Yeah, the fact that you have chosen to listen to us, we appreciate it very much. I love you. Uh, well, well, I don't love anybody. I love you. <laughs> there you go. Jacob Laws uh, writes in and says, have you guys done Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, a.k.a. the Garbage Day movie? Part 2 is definitely a Saturday Night Freak Show movie. We kind of comboed this when we did Silent Night, Deadly Night. Was that the night? Did we watch them both and then talk about the first we one? We did. When we okay. watched the first, this was like two, three years ago. Yeah. Three, uh, probably so we watched like them maybe both. three years, But we watched them both because we yeah. had a good time watching the first one. <laughs> then I made you go, like, let's watch the second uh, one. Okay. You just had to kill like, that high. Oh. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. so the is, second one is made up primarily of uh, footage from the first movie, sure, but right. it does have garbage day. It does. You know, it's got mean. its own elements. So we. F- we fucked that up. Yeah, you got to so, go back and listen. We so, did an episode. So, so, all right. This is what I say to you listeners. Listen to our Silent Night Deadly Night episode. Let us know what you think of it. And should we do a specific episode on part two? There you I'm going to leave it up to you, listener. If you got enough of that episode, great. We won't do it again. If you didn't get enough, maybe we will. There you go. The gauntlet has know. been thrown. Right. I think so. I think it's like, up I'm not going to go back and listen to the first one. So, yes, you should do it. So we can actually hear a new one. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, you're doing a Thanksgiving themed movie and you didn't pick Blood Freak where a man Blood literally freak. turns into a mutant turkey. <laughs> Ooh, all right. I'm intrigued. Mutant turkey. I mean, I've you didn't actually uh, do any research. You didn't look. I, at, I watched no the idea. trailer uh-huh. for Blood Freak. And the guy, I'm like, if he, he has a turkey head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Okay. All right. All right. Oh, bravo. Yeah. That's why I kind of figured that Sean had seen this comment, and that's going to be next week's. Movie, I know I but- missed I missed a lot of comments for this uh, Thanksgiving oh, era, so we will not. I don't think we'll, we won't be picking anything that was recommended. Oh no! Well, Michael, you may have to wait until it's next not year. Even gonna be Blood freak. Theme. Sorry. Uh, about last week's movie countdown, Zombie Brando says it's a really silly movie. But the concept is pretty clever, and I somewhat like the execution. I thought the two leads got the job done and are likable enough to root for, but this really would have benefited from a hard R rating as it would have allowed for some Probably. gory kills. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the killer app movie. Uh, question, though. As much as I appreciate the 
Time's Up reference, did you think the amount of storyline that was given to the sexual harassment from the doctor was totally necessary in that movie? This is not really a spoiler. That's the B plot of. Yeah. Count well, I mean, if you listen to the episode, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's kind of like what I, I was saying, you know, I, I honestly think someone wanted to write Get Out for like the Me Too movement, but just wasn't capable of writing that. So that's why they wrote. That's why I think that plot's in there. No, it didn't need it, but this movie we got. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it needed it, but I don't know. That's a because it feels like a different movie, you book. know. So. Yeah, it feels like, but it also feels like they wrote that part into it, but then gave it no resolution, like no, no yeah, sad, th- no satisfying resolution. Yeah, exactly. So my unfab life says uh, countdown looks like an updated version of the J horror movie One Missed Call. Uh. I haven't, I haven't seen yeah. one I have not a long seen, time. Well, I think we all agree we have not either have not seen it or have not seen it in a long time. Yeah, because yeah. there's both a Japanese and an American version right. of that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, about the previous week's episode, which was Jennifer's body, uh, Feline Fatal said, I like, oh, this is uh, Diablo Cody uh, talking mm-hmm. about, said, I like young adult and Ricky in the Flash with Meryl Streep. Tully was... Yeah. Yeah. But overall, I enjoy Diablo Cody's work. Jennifer's body is a guilty pleasure of mine. Or uh, uh, Jason Reitman. Jason Reitman, yeah. 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 I'll always give her another chance. He He did, did, uh, he did Young Adult, Telly, and Juno. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. That's it. But she works best with him. That's her best. I mean, I mean, those are probably the best ones. mm -hmm. He understands her language better than most. Yeah. Well, we talked at length about the. Hopefully, she wrote on Ghostbusters. Maybe she did an uncredited. Probably. Uh, We uh, talked at length about the uh, lesbian kiss between um, needy. Needy. Yeah. Needy and Jennifer in that movie. (laughs) Sky Sig 44 says, I'll be honest. I watched the movie because of that. Their marketing worked on you, sir. That's what they wanted you to do. I still have not seen this movie. You've never seen Jennifer's body? Never. Wow. Well, Grant Parrish, you're going to not be able to answer this question. Then Grant Parrish writes in and says, "Uh, what's better or worse? The kiss in Jennifer's body or the cruel intentions. Yeah, cruel intentions. Yeah, I knew it was going to go there. Sarah Michelle Geller and Selma Blair kiss, which I haven't seen cruel intentions. So that leaves it on me. I mean, what do you mean by better or worse? Like they're both pretty pointless, you know? It's like, it's just people making out. They're the same thing. Which one inspires the erotic flame better? Cruel intentions. I know. See, that's what probably I'm cruel intentions. <laughs> probably just cruel intentions. type of movie it is. You right. Know? Just because it's yeah, just, yeah. you haven't seen Jennifer's body, so you can't say. Yeah, I'm still gonna give it to. All cruel right. Intentions. About Halloween two. Ah. I'm sorry. We're going way back into the <laughs> the TV cut. The TV, the TV cut. cut. Brett Williams writes in and says, "I get Sean's nostalgia for a time when films went unaltered from theater to premium cable." Before ending up on network TV uh, in an altered form. Before video rental shops took over, if you didn't see it in theaters or could afford HBO, then this is what m- these movies were to you. Right? This is what you got. He says most people didn't even realize there was a difference other than dubbing out the bad language. Yeah. That's true. You didn't. I didn't. I thought Halloween 2 had all those scenes in it. Yeah. But this I saw is, it later and it was this like, This was what? my life. Just like this. Tremors. Just like alternate cuts of these movies. I get it. It's because you were lied to your whole life when you saw the real thing. You're like, <laughs> I just can't. Somebody, the whole, yeah, the fix is like, in. Wait, what? What is this movie? Lied Things to. changed when I discovered uh, that I could access the actual cuts of these movies. Yeah. Then you can make your own cuts, too. Now, I mean, we, uh, we can. People just in go this, and say, yeah. like, I don't like that and make their own thing. Now we're gonna We've go. threatened to do so with these Saturday Night Freak Show I know. cuts. Yeah. We've we're done a lot, yeah. Something I can't remember, awesome but we've done a lot, yeah. Uh, so now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment that you've all been waiting for. Uh, we're going to mm. tell you whether or not we would recommend to you the movie Blood Rage. And to start us off, we're going to talk to... Michaela. <laughs> Michaela, what do you think of Blood Rage slash slasher? Slash. Was there another Nightmare, Nightmare in Shadow Woods. Nightmare in Shadow Woods, which I kind of like. Complex. That feels like a, 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 um, a horror movie set at a old retirement home. Yeah. Well, it's Florida. It may be, it, but it, it really is. Like, you know, honestly, that point, that's yeah. the most unrealistic thing about this movie is that it's all young people living in this apartment complex in Florida. That's not accurate. Let's yeah. be, where, why are there no elderly people in this movie? There should be more. <laughs> but again, they had to uh, they had to give scenes over to the Oscar uh, nominee, <laughs> <laughs> the Oscar nominated performance of what's her name? Louise Lasser. <laughs> Louise Lasser. Probably. Yeah. All right. So Blood Rage. Uh, <laughs> it was awesome. It. I, it was like it had it's just awesome. it had just enough like 
samurai cop amateur shittiness to make it fun um but th- like thankfully like the gore effects weren't amateur like yeah. that like if that had been really bad then it might not be as fun but like it you know come for the, the shitty acting and the the weird weird weirdness and stay for the awesome gore effects you know like it it moves at a really good pace. It's 82 minutes long. It starts right off the bat with the inciting incident. That's fucking awesome. It's, I mean, we were trying to guess where this movie was going to go and yeah. we were wrong most of the time, but we weren't disappointed that we were wrong nope. because it did something way weirder than we expected. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hell yeah. um, way weirder. Way you know. weirder. Uh, I don't. That's the best review. Yeah. It's like, that was way weirder than I mm-hmm. thought it was going to be. I kind of want some more twin slasher movies now. Yeah. You know, why are twins not exploited more in the, this I like I feel like twins are always in like paranormal horror. Bring them more into like the real world horror, you know? Um uh, it was awesome. You gotta watch it. It's really cool and I can't wait to watch it again. Sean. Uh Blood Rage uh is it, it's awesome. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> like I I I, I want wow. to no, I want to find the three version. You're going to watch them all back to back, I aren't do. you? I want to. You haven't ordered it already? What's wrong with you? I, I haven't. I, it's been limited time since I get on my phone <laughs> and order this. But um, I, it, was, it was fucking fun. It was a good time. Um, uh, the effects are really good. Um, but and when I say that, I mean, just like there's some just just some bloody shit that's going on um, there. I think they're pulled off really well. Uh, the acting is ridiculous in this movie. Uh, it's fun. It's funny. Um, uh, <laughs> I had a fucking it, eight, 82 minutes. I had a really good time watching this tonight. Um Hell yeah, Blood Rage. Like, that was really good. That That is an entertaining <laughs> fucking movie. If you told me there's a sequel, I'm watching it. I right would too. too. Like, that is so that is it. entertaining. That is what you want. And like, hey, I have a 1983 horror slasher movie that's really bloody for you. Do you want to watch it? If it's this, I'm just like, fuck yeah. Mm. That's a good if movie. I could, if, if I could make a pick that was like this movie every month for the rest, uh, right? this is the type of movie I would pick every single because time. it's just like, you will be entertained yeah. watching this yeah. movie. Between w- whatever your tastes are, you will find it in this movie. Mm-hmm. And I had a fucking good time watching it. So yeah, I recommend Blood Rage. I'm going to seek out. I want to see those three cuts. <laughs> I want to see what is the difference. You know, I it. was coming actually down. I'm like, you know, this feels like this is the one that afterwards they're all going to want it. They're going to buy a copy. It's gonna be like <laughs> yes. This, your, yeah, like yours. This is yeah. the cut. And you're yeah. just like, that convinces people. I've been sitting so. on this for a year. Oh, damn. Right. Just, I saw it on the, the Joe Bob uh, show yeah. on Shudder. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's not a good movie, right? But there are a lot of movies that I think we like in the horror community where it's like, okay, like the Lucio Fulci's The Beyond, right? Yeah. Right. Is not a good movie. Rusty right. Spiders. But in some whatnot. ways, it's a fucking awesome movie. Yeah. Absolutely. Pieces is not a good movie. But it's Ooh. awesome. But it's an awesome movie. <laughs> Bastards! This, uh, yeah. <laughs> right? The gore yeah. in that, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, this is one of those kind of movies. Where and I don't know if it does. Every time I've seen it, I have had more than just myself. You know, I always wonder if that's the thing. Sure. Like, if you watch this by yourself, if it would be as good. Whenever you watch it with people, it's fucking it's awesome. Great. Yeah, because you know, you know, it's uh, just it's silly. Uh, it's amateurish in a way that doesn't detract from the movie. It actually somehow helps the experience. <laughs> yeah. like there's other movies you watch them and they're like, they're amateurishly bad and you hold it against them. You know, it's like, I just can't do this, yeah. but I think it's because of the, the tone of it. It hits the right tone for the atmosphere, the amateurish movie. It's a slasher movie. It's a low buy-in, right? And it delivers on the gore effects and it delivers on the TNA and it's like, okay. And then the Oscar, you know, the, the should have been Oscar <laughs> yes. nominated performance of uh, should have been <laughs> Louise Lasser, should which just been. throws it into like a completely different oh universe. God. You haven't really seen a slasher movie like this. There are usually a lot more. Um, I was going to say like a uh, uh, structurally conservative. Right, sure. Then this one, this, this one just wanders like, into oh, like yeah. <laughs> into, into just like <laughs> yeah, well, you said yeah. Like Sophie's Choice, yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like what the hell? Yeah, it does it all in eighty two minutes. Yeah, like, yeah, right. It moves at a good oh, clip. Uh, even the scenes that were like hello, 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 hello which I, I as soon as it got there, I was like, oh, we're there. <laughs> this is the yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, I felt that too. I'm just like, oh, we're at that moment. There was okay. an earlier scene where they were doing the hello, 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 where it was the dude walking around like, hello, Todd, right, you so out you there? You want to get high? Want, yeah. He yeah. was like making a conversation out of it. So sure. I'm like, oh, okay. I haven't it's seen It's forgivable. That. You're just like, you're talking to him. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I thought this movie was a fucking blast. I mean, it's one of those one of those movies that you look for as like a hardened horror fan. Yeah, where you like I've seen everything and like nothing surprises you anymore. And you're looking for a movie like this. <laughs> so if you're that person, so. you got to check out Blood Rage because it is the uh, the gold nugget, right? Yeah, you know, when you're tin the diamond panning. in the rough. Yeah. It sucks how many bad movies you have to watch to find ones. <laughs> Unfortunately, right, right. Yeah. and that's Colin's life. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, though, it's like you just you find that one. You're just like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So happy Thanksgiving! You should find yourself a copy of Blood Rage. You. It is streaming right now on Amazon Prime, I believe. But that's probably Sweet. only one version. Watch. Why stick with one version? I think it has this cover though, because this this artwork is the Arrow. I think commissioned for Arrow. Oh, okay. artwork. Yeah, it so seems if like it, yeah. if it has that on it, then it's uh, find that. That's the version you got. So I might need to buy some merch for this movie. Those shirts, They're like Blood Rage shirts. Find I, buy. Like yeah. get, probably doing I think you may get the poster. If, if, like, that that art I can is sold out. That. If you go for the yeah. three, yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's what I'm like. I, this is why I sidebar right. I like the arrow sits there and cleaned up. I mean, this movie looks fucking it pristine. Looks great. Yeah. <laughs> And it should not. <laughs> that they that they invest all this time and effort into a movie that no one has fucking heard of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't you love that? Yeah. Ugh. We live in a, a rarefied Ugh. time. Mm-hmm. In, I love uh, in that history they take right the now. care for that movie that we just <laughs> <Yeah>. watched <laughs> to make it look as yeah. good as it could. It's fantastic. Ugh. It's been recovered. Love it. It looks, fan- it looks great. You got to check out. Blood Rage for a good time. Every Thanksgiving you should be watching. So I think so. Next week. Next week. We're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Sean, what are we watching next week? Uh, we are not going to stick with the Thanksgiving tradition, and we're just going to go off <laughs> weirdly. Uh, but we're going to watch a movie that is going to, I think... Shock uh, and appall. Not, maybe not shock and appall. Maybe. I don't know. Right. But it's going to redeem Oh, don't Sylvester please. Stallone. Redeem in what sense? In what sense is like we have to put Sylvester Stallone at the top. Oh, that's right. Oh, so you're trying wall. to push him back up on the wall. He okay, got bumped gotcha. off the wall. He by, got tied uh, at the wall. I think Jeffrey yeah. Combs. He yeah, did tied. And so. I don't think we Jeffrey can Combs. let that happen. Yeah. So we're gonna bump Sylvester Stallone back up. We're gonna watch perhaps a forgotten movie. Of Sylvester Stallone's called I See You. Oh, okay. Yeah. I figured this is where I thought yeah. you were building to. Yeah. The All Sylvester right. Stallone slasher, slasher movie. The only yes. horror movie he ever did, right? Well, I mean, uh, uh, Cobra is kind of a slasher. Yeah, like, that's true. Yeah, sort of. I don't this think this is like, one, this yeah. is like yeah. Yeah. this is it. So yeah. awesome. I'm excited. Stallone may know his return. This. You may know it as Detox. Show. Yes, the exactly. Detox is actual, it's got a few yeah. names, but he makes his return triumphantly i hope so good it's been a while since to we've the, seen him so exactly to the saturday night freak show <laughs> okay so that's from the director of i know what you did last summer yes yeah okay oh, this that's what you're Sean in. Oh, this guy, yes <laughs> this is ah. Oh, i love it all right so detox aka i see you that's e y e s e yes yeah. uh next week on the saturday night freak show and until then ladies and germs the basement is going dark